I wanted to share a few scripture readings that really prepare our hearts. The first is from Luke 20, verse 17. But Jesus looked at them and said, Then what is the meaning of that which is written? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Jesus said, You will destroy the temple, but in three days I will build it back up. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And from Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with hearts of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive any complaint you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which is the bond of perfect unity from prayer and the five stages of healing. Oh God, absolute pure being, our heavenly Father, Mother, creator of the cosmos, your love, the essence of your being, vibrates throughout the universe. Let my heart and mind be open to catch your thoughts, your ideas, your wisdom, and your knowledge. For you are all-powerful, all-knowing, and everywhere present. As I set my mind to receive your thoughts, my will also aligns with your will. They become one, and your will is done. Amen. And here is a traditional invocation. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy all consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. From Luke chapter 20, verse 17. But Jesus looked directly at them and said, Then what is the meaning of that which is written? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Jesus said, You will destroy the temple, but in three days I will build it back up. From Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And from Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, Clothe yourselves with hearts of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive any complaint you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which is the bond of perfect unity. Come, Holy Spirit, replace my restless mind with the peace that comes from knowing there is a guide who leads me into the tranquil valley where he refreshes me with fertile, loving, inspiring, uplifting thoughts. Replace the anxiety and the fear within me, O Lord, with your calm serenity, your quiet confidence and courageous faith that comes from knowing there is a rock upon whom I am able to lean on during a storm, a rock that will not falter or crumble, 
a rock that is sturdy and strong, the Spirit of Christ who is always there, waiting with arms outstretched. Penetrate down deep into my very being, uncovering all that is hidden, and enliven within me once again that ember of a great love for God, for others, and for myself. Lord God, thank you for letting me see myself as you see me, a wonderful being made in your image, vibrant and alive with abilities and potential for doing great things for you and for your people. Thank you for this tremendous, powerful truth that you are with me and for me all the days of my life, healing me and fulfilling me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, a spirit of love, a spirit of peace, and of joy. I feel the light of God, the universe, and the whole world around me in this moment. In the deep silence of contemplation, I touch the hem of the Christ garment, allowing God to reveal himself as love, mercy, compassion, forgiveness, tenderness, and light. I allow my mind and heart to be bathed by the light energy, the spirit of God. I go and I kneel at the altar of God, and I surrender my heart, my mind, my soul, and my whole being. Spirit, your presence lies at the core of our being. Your presence fills the whole universe. Your presence waits to be released in all fullness, that each of us may realize we are one with Creator, our Divine Father, Mother, our most profound, intimate friend with God. We are one with you. We are one with all creation. During our time together, it is our most profound desire to experience you, not just for head knowledge, but for heart knowledge, that we may know you intimately as our higher self and recognize the divinity that is in each and every one of us. And for this, we are grateful. Amen. From Luke chapter 20, verse 17. But Jesus looked directly at them and said, Then what is the meaning of that which is written? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And Jesus said, You will destroy the temple, but in three days I will build it back up. From Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And from Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, close yourselves with hearts of compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive any complaint you may have against one another. Forgive as the Father forgave you. And all these virtues, over all these virtues, put on love, which is the bond of perfect unity. That question is very rich for me because going back when, (laughs) especially in 1981, where I was asked to join the ministry of Ron Roth, the ministry we have today. And that choice was, I had just bought a house. My job was extremely abundant, so to speak, pay-wise. And it was actually a really easy job. It was in a a metal factory. And so when I put it before the Lord, it was like, well, I don't, you know, I would like to, but, you know, what about my house? What about my job? You know, all the security that I'm looking for or had at the time. And it was a three week process. It was like, maybe, well, I could, yes, you can. And that third one, yes, you can gave me peace. And then I decided, okay, I can 
now travel with Ron full time and giving up my possessions was a big deal, but I had peace. If I didn't have peace, I know I wouldn't have done it. So, but that was my first initial trusting God, trusting faith in God that he says, you can do this. And it's history right now, 40 years later. So, um, but that was my first initial watching God do what God does, just make the crooked path straight. So very fortunate. So I, what I, when you're kind of facing this sort of situation, whether you're going to die or not, but it certainly felt like it at times, the two questions that come coming were, have I lived my purpose? And did I love well? Did I love well enough here? And I started the, the first question, spent some time with, but really the second question is what got me back. And I said, no, I haven't loved well enough. And I, I haven't loved myself well enough. There are some areas that, that need loving. And there's those parts of me, those inner dragons, which need to be understood from a much higher place, from a place of non-conditional love. So that's why I went on a journey. And this is, this is the journey I went down. And this was the message that Jesus was telling me. So I had to put down my armor. And that part of me, there's this part in the blind man story where the Pharisees say to the blind man, because the blind man's really speaking his truth here once he got his sight back and he could see he had a direct experience of the divine he could really see what was going on and and the the pharisees are saying are you trying to teach us (laughs) so they were they just didn't want to hear because they couldn't they couldn't understand that there was a teaching coming from a being that didn't look like he should be a teacher but he was the the greatest he and jesus by man and jesus were the greatest teachers in that moment for for them So I wanted to make sure that any part of me that was thinking I knew something could relax and could be supported by a presence of love so that I can actually see what was going on. So we went there hoping for and praying for my healing. And the priest was very, very spiritual. And he said, when you go downstairs, you know, there's about 175 relics. And many of them he gave us permission to pick up and put to our heart or or touch another religious item to it. And however, we were going to connect with that particular saint. And my first inclination and the first thing I did was to find St. Rita. And I went to her and I prayed for my healing to her, but I was in a lot of fear at that time. And then what I started doing was thinking, which was the worst thing I could have done. But then I started thinking, well, how about if it's not St. Rita, who's my saint? And this is only in my mind because it's my name. And I started to literally panic and run to every single saint, 175, that were there. And I was really panicking and My youngest son, who was six at the time, saw me, and he said, Mom, do you know who your saint is? And I said, Aiden, Mom's having a really hard time hearing right now. And he says, well, do what you always tell me. Stop listening with your head and listen with your heart. And he was right. And he said, well, she told me you weren't listening. So come over here. I wrote it down for you. And I went to where he was. And he had a little business card that he must have gotten from the priest. And he wrote down, Aiden Saint, Saint Malachi. And underneath it, Mom Saint, Saint Rita. And he said, Mom, she told me that you weren't listening. And you need to go back to her for your healing. And I trusted him. All my kids came in very intuitive with many, many spiritual gifts. I rushed back to St. Rita, apologizing for not trusting myself. And I, I spent the rest of my time there with her. I see Divine Providence as just the most wonderful orchestration of the universe. And the universe is always working for us. But it takes a lot of trust and faith to get there. Because when we're at a celebrating life retreat or things are going wonderfully in our lives, oh, we're open mind and it's easy. But what happens when things get difficult? Often, you know, that's when we close down or fear comes in or there's all these other blocks that prevent us from really listening because we can't hear. And then sometimes we hear and we don't like the answer. 
And it, yeah. it could be habitual. It could be from a place of lack. I mean, we have all of our reasons of why we continue to right. do the same thing or not follow through with right action. Yeah. When we hear that voice in however way we hear it, if you have fear, you cannot hear God. So sometimes it's just being able to trust. But yeah. being in a place of complete surrender, openness, and trusting can give you something more miraculous, more awesome, amazing than anything we could ever like conjure up ourselves. So when we're talking about divine providence, to me, it's having that trust that things will work out better than you could ever put together. So, George, what is that miracle or daily miracle for you? My guide showed me this right away, too. Uh, I've been for this has been a long time. So this is an interesting piece of this. I remember going to Brazil. This is when I met you, Padre, a, a long time ago. <laughs> well, when we yeah, first connected, we first connected. <laughs> and this was years ago. And one of my prayers was a reconnection with music in a way a joyful way, the, a way that I, when I was a child, I had it mm -hmm. and lost it along the way with lessons and competition wow. and all these things, all these things came in. And I've been praying for this for a long time. And just in the last, I'd say last two to three months, something shifted. I, d I don't know what it is. You know, with FSD, it. we took a big step and there's bun things happening, but something happened has happened in the last couple of months in my connection with music and my connection to when I sit down mm. at the piano and I know that it's God. I know it's it's what my heart was praying for. He doesn't always give everything like the next day. It doesn't always work <laughs> that way. We're like, where's I, I ordered this yesterday, God, you know, but sometimes yeah. it's it's a long yeah. path because we have to be ready. If we got everything in an instant, there would be no value and we wouldn't appreciate it. But my heart is so full from him blessing me and, oh. and and granting this reconnection. And I just, I want to testify. I want to say, stand up yeah. and be counted and say, this happened to me. This is true. Oh. So That's so beautiful. I love that, George, because it's the, that now when it happens, when you know uh, God's answered my prayer. Yes. And journaling is such a beautiful thing of putting down your requests. So you remember you're asking God for this when it shows up. It's like, he did answer. Now it might be a while, but he's faithful. Let's suspend our doubt. And let's just enter into this mystery called God, called the Holy Spirit, called the Holy Season, called um, uh, Hanukkah, you know, the season of light, the promise that is, have been given to us. And to me, that's really just a quicken my spirit. And I know during the holidays, which has already started in my world, there's a, a softness, a, a, an awareness of God's present more than normal in my world. So love this in Romans 8, 37. We are more than conquerors through him that loves us. So the, the idea of the L is stands for love. And it's like, if God didn't love us first, how can we even reach out to love either ourselves or others? So there is a, a connecting point. And if you've never looked at that view before, we can overcome by God's love. By God's promises. And to me, God's promises is his word. It's a prophetic word. It's just a knowing that comes that when the spirit speaks to our hearts that you know that you know that you know that God is, loves us. I love this quote, and I'm sure you've heard it many times. Very scriptural. I am that I am. There is no question in my eyes, in God's eyes, in your eyes, the great I am presence says, I created you and I'll bring you back home into my heavenly realm. And to me, what is your burning bush experience? Have you had one? Have you had God speak to your heart? One of his qualities is really just to draw us into that mystery. Here's a question. What if you woke up today with only the things you thank God for yesterday. <laughs> Isn't that a great quote? <laughs> I don't know about you. I keep thanking God, even when things go amok in my world, I, I realize God is getting my attention. So I thank him because it, to me, it's 
I'm not seeing what's in front of me, or I'm just so blind that I want to get done with my projects and I'm not listening. So for me, being grateful to God, trusting in God's presence, that he brings that light to us, which is faith. And it, it just stirs me to know that I woke up, you know, even this morning, it's like, there's nothing in my body that ached. There was no stress of what today is going to bring. So I just rested in that this morning, you know, and just thank God for um, that nothingness, <laughs> which to me uh, defines God's presence hovering over me or within me. God <laughs> meets us at our greatest needs. And Psalm, Psalm 6, and keep me safe, God, for in you, I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I will have, I have no good things. And to me, when that word take refuge, you put all your trust in that divine presence. And, you know, when life goes amok, when life doesn't make sense, I run to my heavenly father, my heavenly mother, and I just sit in their presence and just let me express my you know grieving whatever complaining whatever it might be and then i can just rest with their response which is unconditional love and that begins to just melt away all the stuff that i've been i'm shaking in in that one moment the next letter v stands for victories in our life i love this prayer prayer is when you talk to god meditation is when god talks to you meaning zip it and just listen. And I love Rick Warren's um, talk about God changes caterpillars into butterflies, sands into pearls, and coal into diamonds. Using time and pressures, he's working on you. And if you are in that place right now, you feel this pressure, you feel confused. God is beginning to change those things that have already bound us, that's that sometimes we're in depression, fear, anger. Those are indicators that something needs to be let go of. Something needs to be unattached so we can actually feel the presence of God. And so let that work begin today. Send your angels and say, just use whatever today, the, the prayer, the word, the music, or whatever expression that is to change my heart so I can breathe again that new life and breath. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. That's John 17. If we're looking to live this life to the fullest, but also what the other life is awaiting us, to me, it's just a, a, a step, one step into eternity. And if you want to define eternity, I believe you just listen to that heart of yours because if God created us, we're going to be going back to that place of divine union, which is a strong relationship with God. And if you've never committed to Christ, please do that, especially during this holiday. I believe this portal, this grace is so wide open that just pour yourself out and allow God to pour himself back into you. So one of the things that in thinking about this and preparing that they at times as they were in this place of the desert, they had lost sight of how God was with them every step of the way. And God provided for them in their darkest moments when they were tired, they were thirsty, they were hungry, they were exhausted from their travels. God was with them. He provided manna from heaven every day until they reached the promised land. He provided quail, additional nourishment in addition to the manna. He would shift the winds where they were in need of more protein or more nourishment. God would shift the winds and provide birds for them. God also, when they were thirsty in the middle of the desert, he provided water that came from the rocks. And he also provided a way for them to know when it was okay to travel. He provided a cloud, a pillar of cloud and a fire, a pillar of fire that would guide them and it would tell them where to go, when to go, when to prepare to leave, to go to the next camp. So God was there for them in this desert, in this journey. And I was 
thinking about this in terms of this, what you have before you, this is God's work site. Whether we enter into this wilderness, we physically go there and enter into it, or we enter into our heart space, we enter into that inner desert, knowing that this is God's workspace. This is the space that God chooses to teach us about surrendering and to teach us about the mystery entering into the unknown. And for this, we are grateful. All of us at some time in our life will embark on this journey to go into the desert, to go into and hear the whisper, to hear the voice of God. We all must enter at one time in our life. And some of us on this call have already entered the desert. Or maybe on, you're on this call and you're being called to go within, to go into this desert. But at some point, we are all called to go within. And like the Israelites, we may find ourselves bumping up against detours, distractions, roadblocks. But we all must continue on this journey inward and so it talked about they've been there were 10 spies that they sent out to just check out the land see what and it says eight came back with a negative report and mm -hmm. one of the reports was they're so big you know and the, the crates of 10 spies doubt self deprivation fear critical spirit does that sound anything like your personality i know i can agree to a couple of those there and I'm sure you have faced some giants. I have faced some giants because it's not same old, same old no more. And we really have to go into um, finding out what, what my perceptions are. I can't rely on the old way anymore. I have to actually come into that new. And some people might call it an awakening, um, enlightenment. I call it born again. Uh, whatever the criteria that you uh, label it, we have to enter into this place beyond ourselves. And for me, it's really entering into the promised land. And so, you know, with these, these giants that uh, they talked about, it's our fear. It's our limitation. Mm -hmm. And so I just want you to identify during this series of what that might be for you. Or you can probably give me five right now. In Deuteronomy uh, 1, 28, it says, where can we go? Our brothers have made our hearts melt, saying, the people are larger and taller than we are. The cities are large, the walls are up to the heavens. Even they saw the descendants there. Again, the feedback, the, the mindset. So one of the first questions I would ask, I ask myself, and, and I would like to present it to you is, who are you listening to? Are, are there people, situations where, uh, where you talk? You know, you share your heart, but is it one of the encouragement or what one of the, is it doom? We all have permission to enter in, but we have to choose that. So if we're entering in, now there's actually a, a, a criteria and it says enter through the narrow gate. Now, what's that about? You know, and it's like, to me, it's about spirit using us, you know, the, the, the guidance that we get not the negative, and it could be because sometimes we need to be challenged of our own negative thinking because it's not right. But the majority of the time, it's kind of leading us into a path. And to me, it's that narrow path and it gets narrow and narrow because we can't take our attachments with us. We can't take our, our stuff with us, our friends with us, our family with us. God says, come, he calls us by name. He didn't say, come the whole family of God, come over here, he says, you. I called you by name. So you come and enter in. So it's really that personal relationship. Now, with that, your family, your friends, and all that, I am sure can come along, but he wants us first and foremost. Because it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Mm -hmm. You shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy strength, with all thy will. You shall love the neighbor as you love yourself. So to, for me, is if we experience the love of God, then we have access. And then we can enter in, granting access like we talked about last month. But one of the things that I saw that really um, deterred me or stopped me was, you know, in, in, uh, th there's a quick scripture quote that says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
we can tap into that higher dimension of living if we seek the wisdom of God. But I remember in the last you know, couple of weeks, God has been reminding me to go back to basics. Yeah. You know, and those principles that I have lived by and maybe put them on the shelf and have to go back mm -hmm. to them because that's my grounding, you know, because mm -hmm. I can get so, as Ron Ross says, so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. And right yeah. now this earth is so much changing in it that it's mm -hmm. like, it doesn't make sense. You know, where's your faith? And I think in this time of um, quarantine, this virus, we have to really draw on something that is part of who we are and grew up in. And if not, establish something. But for me, it really does call me to remember when God called me to reach out to heal someone or to uh, just lend a hand. It's stepping out in the unknown. And this is a perfect time for humanity right now to step into that unknown. We're feeling it. We might not understand it, but use our faith in order to step into it. Not just, oh, I'll just da -da -da -da, I'll be there when I want to be. I don't think we can choose anymore. I really believe it's part of the, the entering into this narrow gate. We don't understand it, but you feel that pull. I really love the, um, the scripture where it talked about, and I think most people, you, you know this quote, it's about Jonah. It says um, in Matthew 12, 40, it talks about, for as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. You know, um, it's interesting um, because that was a foreshadowing, you know, of what God wants. That's the Padre, you know, <laughs> the whale's going to have me for lunch <laughs> or you, you know, maybe you, you feel that way sometimes. It's really interesting that... Um, for me, when I was reading this, something um, was illuminated. And I've heard this story many times, but how would it play itself out for me? So when I was reading this uh, quote, I want to set you up. Jonah, God asked him to go visit this different people group. And like all of us, they went, mm -mm, not today. I'm busy. I'm going to go this way. And so he took off at the opposite direction where God wanted him to go. And he ended up in this boat and a storm came up and it was breaking apart. The, uh, the, the boat was breaking apart and the men on the boat were wise and says, this is my interpretation. Who's pissing God off? <laughs> Meaning who's not obeying God? And then Jonah says, oh, it's me. So what they did was throw him overboard. And so in God's favor, he had this beautiful whale suck him up. And for three days, he's in the belly of the whale. And what God did with Jonah was he turned his heart towards back to God and say, God, I will serve you. I will do your will, not my will. And I believe we're all being called to that. If you haven't heard that ding, 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 that little saying, listen, it's on my heart. Something's changing. Or maybe a better term is God's drawn us back to his heart, the heart of love. The heart of mercy. Mary's calling us back to that heart. I'm going to ask the question for you. Are you hearing God? Just think back maybe even, was it three weeks, three months? Doesn't matter. What is God asking you to do during this time? And it's all about going back and I call it reconciling because we all have our versions of who God is. But when it comes to that one-on-one -on -one relationship, it gets very personal. Just like Jonah, it's like, okay, I surrender. And so he got spit it out, and he went to that direction that God uh, asked him to do. And it said many people were saved, healed, and heard the gospel. So for me, for you, who in your area, who in your um, neighborhood, who in your family that maybe God is asking you to be among but it's really, it's about when God says go, you go, you enter in. So, you know, the thing about the Holy Spirit is like, um, he asks us to name our giants. He really asks us to pay attention to what obstacles that are in front of us. And the other one is we need to partner with God, whatever obstacles that's there, knowing that it's in God that we trust. So allow on the Holy Spirit, that picture of the Holy Spirit, Allow that to now just to take, take it from your hands into his hands. Let that light that's within us, let it out. And just trust, have faith, have hope that even in God, 
all things are possible. So what is your prayer tonight that when we pray, what impossible thing do you want God to do for you? Because he's there for you. Perfectionism. I find it comes up intensely when I'm going through big shifts like that. And I have to keep coming back to my heart because the heart mm -hmm. shatters it all. The, the, that spiritual heart that we have connection to. It, that stuff can't live there. It kind of goes back into hiding. <laughs> or maybe it'll shatter completely. I don't know. That honesty is what gets us through and makes us available from my experience to receive more presence, God's mm -hmm. presence. We'll get back into some of these stories too with them. I want to share a, a little bit more about our bond with, with God or spirit. And this used to be very, like I said, intellectual to me. I knew there was something deeper in me that felt a connection with God. But as I went through schooling, which was great, it helped me in many ways, I also found myself getting more intellectual and building a muscle of a certain part of my mind versus, versus let's say, the divine mind or the heart. To me, they're in some way, they're similar. And there's something that's always, um, when I'm going through tough times, uh, Jesus is such a beautiful example to me of someone who moves through suffering with grace. And he just, and also someone who just embraced his purpose here and really, and really lived, you know, lived fully. There's a scene in, I believe it's Luke, something like that. Let's say it's Luke, yeah, Luke, where right before he's sent to the cross, right before he's betrayed, where he's in the garden of Gethsemane. And he was, he's pretty much saying, God, you know, I, can you take this away from me? I, this is, you know, in a sense, you know, this is, this is too much. And yet, you know, he said, you know, there's a little moment of doubt there or pain. There's just a lot of grief. He's going through a lot of grief. And then he said, but your, your will, not my will. So Jesus went through pain just like we do. He was, he was human. He had a very strong connection with the divine. And he had, just like a lot of us right now, we're going through a lot of things. One of the things he was showing us was how to pray, you know, that honesty. Like, I don't want this right now. This is true. There's a part of me that doesn't want this. But your will, not my will, not my ego's will, your will. The, the partnership I've created, my higher self created with you, God. I want that to happen. I want to be willing to open to that. And so because of that prayer and that connection, you could see that angel came in and, and offered him support. And it helped him. It gave him strength to move on his path. That was the presence. You know, he allowed that presence. And there were many more moments of that that happened along the way for him too. I'm just going to ask everyone, you know, as we're moving along, like as Padre always said, this is a healing time. This is a healing service. And there are angels and guides with you right now. And if you can just allow yourself, whatever you're going through, just to be held, just to know that you might feel a touch of a slight pressure on your shoulder or your back or your head or your heart and to let that healing presence in. So my words are just my words. This is just a presentation. What's more important than that is to let in the healing. Is to let in that healing because this is real. This is real. Whatever you're going through, it doesn't matter. There's nothing too big for God. You take one step towards God, God takes a thousand steps towards you. It's just that one moment of willingness, just to receive, to receive that grace. And as we move forward, just continue, you can continue, you can have your eyes closed, you can lay down if you'd like. This is all about the energy of the heart. This is all about the energy of God. This is all about the spirit of God, which is coming in now. It's coming into the space, and it wants to be with you. This is where we all come from. Divine Presence, Father, Mother, God, Eternal Mystery, Divine Healing Presence. We believe in your boundless, unchanging love. We want to live this present moment in your peace, in your presence, knowing that you are for us at all times. We rest in the awareness of your love and your compassion, united with your presence and your power, we are filled with gratitude. 
thank you for this evening. Thank you for this teaching that we are about to receive into our hearts. We are confident of this one thing, that you, who have begun this good work in each of us, that we will bring this into completion with you, for you are faithful. Thank you. Thank you, God, for everything. Amen.